Integra challenged the world to break the code to find the next big discovery. What we did instead is provide an entire system that Integra can use to find all the deposits on the property with the least drilling possible. The SGS Geostat strategy distills all the data into a basic score. The hotter the color, the higher the probability of hitting gold. We only see a single slice here. The whole block model covers the entire property to a depth of 2 kilometers for a total of 625,000 blocks. We started by cramming each one of the blocks with as much information as we could get our hands on. Each block was assigned a prospectivity score by two independent ranking methods. The first is geological knowledge, where JP and I used exploration experience to weight each of the 14 factors using four formulas to get the most dependable score. For the second set of scores, we then entrusted the raw data to Doug, who established a machine learning architecture. This technique is a subfield of artificial intelligence, and we were very excited by the results of his work. We can easily update both of these sets of scores after each drill campaign for a new iteration of prospectivity scores. This means that Integra doesn't need to hold a new million dollar contest every year. Our exploration plan included collection of new data, such as core scan and geophysics. Our system is hungry for more data. We then designed a drill plan to test the highest value clusters of blocks. Each proposed drill hole was vetted in our own virtual reality environment using Oculus Rift technology. Our in-house software, Genesis, is the first and only platform that enables viewing geological data in this intuitive and immersive environment. You might assume that we used fancy methods to avoid having to do the dirty work of geology. GP and I were extremely diligent in ensuring that the data inputs were as reliable as possible. We truly believe in the garbage in, garbage out principle, and it definitely applies to our methodology. This is part of the analysis that JP completed to model the three main vein orientations in LeapFrog. Although LeapFrog did a good job of modeling the key lithologies, in this case the brittle rock types that are, that are the primary host to mineralization, the shapes are relatively unreliable in areas further from drilling information. To solve this, we used indicator krigging to assign a probability that each block contains each of the three key rock types. JP established a relationship between the gold grade and major element chemistry, as well as background arsenic values. Three separate orders of shear zones were identified and modeled in 3D. The gold deposits can be associated with a second and third order shears, so the distance to each structure was incorporated into each block. Gold was shown to be hosted within one of three main orientations. We interpolated the gold values in, in these three geometries. Each of the spokes of this wheel represents a separate data type that was fed into every block. A few other data types were included such as the regional oxygen isotope isopleth and even the distance from historical claim boundaries. This is the raw data from which we calculated the two independent prospectivity scores. Each of those parameters were weighted to get, a, to get a geological knowledge prospectivity score. We used four separate weighting formulas because we recognized that most of the data is clustered around known mineralization and we did not want to handicap too heavily the distal areas. The four formulas included open pit, near mine, well informed underground, and poorly informed underground. If a given block meets all of our criteria, it gets 100, otherwise it gets knocked down for each missing ingredient. Here we see the outer layer of blocks with many of the hotspots related to known ore. We're now going to dive into our machine learning scoring. The method we chose is called Bayesian Gaussian Process Latent Variable Modeling. It is an algorithm that Doug assembled that is a juggernaut for learning complex relationships in big data and making predictions on the presence of gold. The technique has been used in applications such as facial recognition. This is because humans are complex and unpredictable, just like ore bodies. We feed the machine algorithm examples of success, such as gold and sigma and Lamac deposits, and then the machine digs through the 14 dimensions and trains itself to find complex correlations that humans cannot possibly identify with our soft brains. The end result is a prediction of ore. 
another prospectivity score for each location and space. In many cases, the results of the geology brain and the machine learning brain were similar, but a few interesting hotspots were highlighted. One of the benefits of our strategy is that we can test whether it actually works by comparing the prospectivity scores with known mineralization. Let's take a look along two sections on the Sigma Lamac property. Remember, the hotter the color, the better the score. This section shows the excellent correspondence of very high scores over the Lamac and Sigma deposits, as well as some of the target types that we identified. Note that not all of these target numbers made the final cut after our vetting process. This is a separate section showing the relative position of the triangle in plug 4 deposits. For us, this was the most important test because there was only a single hole in the database from Triangle, yet it stands out clearly as a, as a high value target. This is a sep Again, all the methods described here can be updated regularly to provide a new iteration of prospectivity scores so geologists can argue for their favorite target using a set baseline. It surpasses the human limitations to find the vectors to ore and is hungry for more data. This is it. The messy six terabytes of data was distilled into this final, updatable, unbiased scoring system. Spotting the hot clusters of blocks is easy, but we focused on, on the highest value targets, taking into consideration the capex and opex required to move those tons to the mill. 14 drill holes were planned on the best opportunities to keep the Sigma mill full during ramp up and beyond. This crop of targets represents the first of many batches that flow to the top using the SGS Geostat exploration targeting strategy.